Hello and welcome to the history of Microsoft. In the 1970s, at work, we would rely on typewriters to make documents or letters. If we needed to make copies of a document, we would most likely have used a mimeograph, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. A mimeograph was a stencil duplicator machine. It was a low-cost duplicating machine that works by forcing ink through a stencil and onto paper. Eventually, the mimeograph was replaced by photocopiers, and typewriters were replaced by computers. In 1975, Paul Allen and Bill Gates created a small company called Microsoft. The name Microsoft was created from the word micro and software. Bill Gates was born to William Henry Gates III and Mary Gates on October 28, 1955. His father was a Seattle attorney. His mother was a school teacher in the University of Washington, and he went to Lakeside Prep School. In the early school days, Bill Gates was the top of his class for most of the years, especially in math and science. In 1968, he was introduced to computers. Bill Gates and his friend Paul Allen used to skip class and were spending more and more time in the computer room. They started to find out how these computers work and read books on them and also started to write programs for them. Bill Gates started to write programs for computers at the age of 13 and still holds that position as one of the youngest and smartest programmers ever. In June 1980, Gates and Allen hired Gates' former Harvard classmate, Steve Ballmer, to help run the company. The next month, IBM approaches Microsoft about a project codenamed Chest. In response, Microsoft decided to focus on a new operating system. For those of you that don't know what an operating system is, an operating system is a software that manages or runs the computer hardware and also serves to bridge the gap between the computer hardware and programs, such as a word processor. It's the foundation on which a computer can run. They named their new operating system, get ready for it, MS-DOS. When the IBM PC running MS-DOS shifts in 1981, it introduces a whole new language to the general public. Typing C and various cryptic commands gradually becomes part of the daily work, and people discover the backslash key. One of the most memorable things about this operating system was the games, and this is where it all began for the PC Master Race. Who all remembers playing Doom? Doom was a classic first-person shooter game. The series focuses on the exploits of an unknown space marine who fights hordes of demons and the undead in order to survive. Doom is considered to be one of the pioneering first-person shooter games and had features such as 3D graphics, third-dimension spatiality, network multiplayer gameplay, and support for player-created modifications with the Doom WAD format. Doom was a good game, but there was also other games as well, and a lot of people are still playing those games today. MS-DOS is effective, but also proves to be difficult to understand for many people. And because of that, Microsoft decided that there has to be a better way to build an operating system. So they started working on a new operating system. Fun fact for you, MS-DOS stands for Microsoft Disk Operating System. Microsoft started working on the first version of the new operating system. At one time, Interface Manager was going to be considered the final name, but Windows prevailed because it best described the boxes or computing windows that are the fundamental to the new system. Windows was announced in 1983, but it takes a while to develop. Skeptics call it vaporware. On November 20, 1985, two years after the initial announcement, Microsoft shifts Windows 1.0. Now, rather than typing MS-DOS commands, you now just need to move the mouse and point and click your way through the screens. Oh, Windows. There were drop-down menus, scroll bars, icons, and dialog boxes that makes the programs easier to learn and use. Now you was able to switch among several programs without having to quit or restart each one. Windows was shipped with several programs, including MS-DOS file management, Paint, Windows Writer, Notepad, Calculator, and a few other ones as well. They even had a game, and that game was called Reversi. One of the points to that game was to teach people how to use the mouse and cursor. On December 9, 1987, Microsoft releases Windows 2.0 with desktop icons and expanded memory. With improved graphics support, you can now overlap windows, control the screen layout, and use keyboard shortcuts to speed up your work. Some software developers write their first Windows-based programs for this release. In 1988, Microsoft becomes the world's largest PC software company based on sales. At this time, computers are starting to become part of the daily life for some office workers. Here's a fun fact for you. Control Panel makes its first appearance in Windows 2.0. On May 22, 1990, Microsoft announces Windows 3.0 followed shortly by Windows 3.1, only two years later in 1992. Taken together, they sold 10 million copies in their first two years, making this the most widely used Windows operating system during that time. The scale of this success causes Microsoft to revise earlier plans. Virtual memory improves visual graphics. In 1990, Windows starts to look like versions to come. 
this version of Windows has significantly better performance, advanced graphics with 16 colors, and improved icons. With a new wave of 386 PCs, helps drive the popularity of Windows 3.0. With poor support for the Intel 386 processor, programs will run noticeably faster. Program Manager, File Manager, and Print Manager arrives in Windows 3.0. At this time, Windows is increasingly used at work and at home, and also included games like Solitary, Hearts, and Minesweepers. At one time, there was an advertising saying, now you can use the incredible power of Windows 3.0 to goof off. When Windows NT was released on July 27, 1993, Microsoft meets an important milestone. And that was the completion of the project that began in the late 1980s to build an advanced operating system from scratch. Unlike Windows 3.1, Windows NT is a 32-bit operating system, which makes it better for business with platforms that support high-end engineering and scientific programs. Windows 95 On August 24, 1995, Microsoft releases Windows 95, selling a record-setting 7 million copies in the first five weeks. It is the most publicized launch Microsoft has ever taken on. Television commercials featuring the Rolling Stones singing Start Me Up over images of the new start button. The press release simply begins, it's here. At this time, it is the era of fax machines, modem, emails, the new online world, and dazzling multimedia games and educational software. Windows 95 has built-in internet support, dial-up networking, and new plug-and-play capabilities that makes it easier to install hardware and software. This 32-bit operating system also offers enhanced multimedia capabilities, more powerful features for mobile computing, and integrated networking. Released on June 25, 1998, Windows 98 is the first version of Windows designed specifically for consumers. At this time, PCs were becoming more and more common at work and at home. Also, internet cafes where you can get online were starting to pop up everywhere. Windows 98 is described as an operating system that works better and plays better. My first computer was a gateway computer and it had Windows 98, and I love that operating system. With Windows 98, you can find information more easily on your PC as well as the internet. Other improvements include the ability to open and close programs more quickly and support for reading DVD discs and Universal Serial Bus, also known as USBs. Another first appearance is the Quick Launch Bar, which allows you to run programs without having to browse the Start menu or look for them on your desktop. Another fun fact for you, Windows 98 is the last version based on MS-DOS. Windows Me, designed for home computer use, this brings us into the Millennium Edition of Windows. Released in the year 2000, Windows Me as this version was called, was perhaps Microsoft's biggest mistake, a minor upgrade that seriously broke more things than it fixed. This new version upgraded Windows 98 multimedia and internet features, added the new Windows Movie Maker application, and introduced the System Restore utility. All good things. Unfortunately, Windows Me was noticeably bug-written and prone to frequent freezes and crashes. This caused many consumers and most businesses to skip the upgrade entirely. Windows 2000 Professional, released somewhat simultaneously with customer target Windows Me, Windows 2000 was a more successful update. Windows 2000 was the immediate successor to Windows NT. Windows 2000 was an evolution from the base NT platform, still targeting the corporate market. Unlike NT, which had just two versions, Workstation and Server, Windows 2000 came with five different versions, Professional, Server, Event Server, Data Center Server, and Small Business Server. Interface-wise, all versions incorporated features from Windows 95 and 98, which made for a more sophisticated look and feel. Even today, 16 years later, I still see a few businesses that still uses that operating system. Very few, though. But most businesses have already upgraded to XP or later. And speaking of XP, on October 25, 2001, Windows XP is released with a redesigned look and feel that's centered on the usability and an undefined help and support services center. Windows consumer and corporate tracks were joined with this release. This was the first version of Windows to bring corporate reliability to the consumer market and a consumer friendliness to the corporate market. XP blended the best of Windows 95, 98, Me line with a bulletproof 32-bit operation of Windows NT in 2000 and also threw in a revamped user interface to boot. With Windows XP, Microsoft began to segment the market with several different versions, each with its own unique feature set. The different versions included XP Home Edition, XP Professional for business users, 
XP Media Center Edition, XP Tablet PC Edition, and XP Starter Edition. The XP Starter Edition was for users in developing countries. From an end-user standpoint, XP was faster and better looking version of Windows than its early precessors. The newly animated Luna interface was much more better looking and more user friendly. The user switching enabled the same machine to be easily shared by several different users. Windows XP also had a 64-bit edition. It was the first Microsoft operating system for 64-bit processors. It was designed for working with large amounts of memory and projects such as movie special effects, 3D animation, engineering, and scientific programs. In 2007, Windows Vista was released. Of course, it did not come without its skeptics. PC makers said that it required more processing power, graphics capabilities, and more memory than what was typical for PCs at that time. Software vendors would complain that Vista's vaunted security features are, in fact, locking them out. Many users wonder if it was even worth it, particularly given that the number of Vista features and bundled applications are also available on Windows XP. But Vista's new design played a big role in Windows Vista. The features such as the taskbar and the borders around the windows get a brand new look. The search gets a new emphasis and helps people find files on their PC faster. Windows Vista introduces a new additions that each have a different mix of features. It's available in 35 languages. The redesigned start button makes it the first appearance in Windows Vista. While most users didn't have any problems, the one who did were quite vocal about it. And with doing that, they was creating a general perception that Vista was a failure. Later, as Windows Vista service packs were releasing, the OS did get better and fixed a lot of issues. But by this time, it already had a bad rap, which led Microsoft to release its successor two years later. In 2009, Windows 7 was released for the wireless world of the late 2000s. By this time, laptops are all selling desktop, and it's become common to connect to public wireless hotspots in coffee shops and private home networks in the home. Windows 7 includes new ways to work with Windows, like Snap, Peek, and Shake. That improves the functionality and makes the interface more fun to use. It also marks the debut of Windows Touch, which lets touchscreen users browse the web, flip through photos, and open files and folders. Fun fact, Windows 7 was evaluated by 8 million beta testers worldwide before it was released. Windows 8. Windows 8 is a reimagined operating system from the chipset to the user experience, and introduced a totally new interface that works smoothly for both touch and mouse and keyboard. It functions as both a tablet for entertainment and a full-featured PC for getting things done. Windows 8 also includes enhancements of the familiar Windows desktop, with a new taskbar and a streamlined file management. Windows 8 features a new start screen with tiles that connects people, files, apps, and websites. And this version of Windows has a built-in app store, which you can go there and purchase apps, like you do with Android and Apple. This too wasn't a very popular version of Windows due to the start screen replacing the start menu. But in Windows version 8.1, they did bring back the start menu. Well, somewhat, just not like it was. And speaking of Windows 8.1, thanks to the customer feedbacks, Windows 8.1 provided many improvements and new features, including the return of the start menu, as I said before. See, Microsoft listens to you. And finally, but not least, Windows 10. Windows 10 arrived early in 2015, but not all at once. Microsoft makes the early versions of the operating system available to the enthusiasts via the Windows Insider program, inviting customers to contribute to the development and the future of Windows 10. When Windows 10 officially released, this was the first time that Windows Upgrade is offered free to customers for one year after its release. If you haven't already, you can go ahead and upgrade and you got until July or August of 2016. Windows 10 operating system delivers an upgraded Windows interface, focusing on the iconic start menu and building an interactive experience from there. And I'm not going to lie, I actually like the start menu. It is much better. It kind of reminds me of Linux Mint's start menu. Windows 10 introduces a new Microsoft voice that is more conversational and approachable than before. Cortana makes her first appearance on PC with Windows 10, following her successful introduction on the Windows 8.1 phone. She even sings lullabies and tells jokes. And with that, I'm going to pretty much end this video. This is a long video, but it's the history of Windows PCs. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you didn't get bored. But anyways, that's it for this video. Don't forget that like button, comment, subscribe. You can also catch me on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you and have a nice day.